What's up? I'm B, and welcome to my living room. Today we are doing another reaction video, but it's going to be kind of two reaction videos. So there is a YouTube content creator that some people have been asking me to look into. I've also gotten a ton of recommendations of other people reacting to her. You may or may not have heard of this creator. Her name is The Transformed Wife, and she has 5.3 thousand subscribers on YouTube. She's been making videos for about four years now, and some of her most popular videos include titles like Should Wives Have Sex With Their Husbands? Uh, Even If They Don't Feel Like It, Why I Hate Birth Control, Do I Hate Women, Organic Sourdough, Einkorn Bread, No, We Did Not Abuse Our Children, and Women Going Topless. So, I'm sure you can kind of see where maybe the vibe of this channel is. I've never personally watched The Transformed Wife before, but based on those titles, this kind of seems like something right up my alley. If you are newer to my channel or you've never seen me before, I do a lot of reactions as well as conversations about personal development, religion, and just kind of overall mentality where we take a look, we give a critique, in most cases, it's a, it's a pretty negative critique, but uh, I try to offer kind of an alternative thought or maybe something that we can take away from whatever it is that we are looking at that is a bit more positive. So I have chosen two videos today to react to. One with a title that made me go, I'm sorry, what? And another that I was like, okay, this might be a positive video based on the title. Like this might be something I align to. And they're pretty short, so let's just go ahead and get into them. The title of this first video is, is Obligation Sex Toxic in Marriage? And um, I have my opinion, but let's just react to what we are presented with. My name's Lori Alexander. Hi, Lori. And on my transformed wife page through the, through the news feed, sometimes I will have pages that are recommended for me. And the last couple days I've got, I received Page, a page that was recommended to me that I used to follow many years ago. But when we got into discussion with her about my husband and I, about submitting, why submitting to their husbands, she was completely opposed to that. And so I knew that. I actually have a video that I did reacting to Paul and Morgan where they bring up the wives submit to your husband's religious argument. And in that, I kind of break down the history and the meaning of where that verse comes from and my opinion on it. So I will link it up here in case you are interested in checking that out whenever we are done with this. That it wasn't a page for me. <laughs> she teaches mostly sex about sex and marriage. And today I saw that she had posted that how obligation sex is so toxic. She gave, there was an illustration of a woman who was Fair. pregnant and uncomfortable and someone said just, you know, pleasure him manually and and she kind of responded saying that no the husband should give her a body massage that's it's obligation sex is just toxic <laughs> and as i said mm-hmm. and r- right when i uh what page is that because that sounds like a page i would like to follow obligation sex so from um a religious standpoint i do think that this is kind of related to toxic ideas in religion because very often in deeply religious communities you will find this sense of um, wives submit to your husbands taken to that extreme to where if your husband cheats on you it's because you weren't making him happy it's because you messed up you know you need to forgive him and take him back because the only reason he sought something somewhere else is because he wasn't getting it from you and I think that uh To put it lightly, that toes the line in terms of what's appropriate of what we expect from our spouses and partners, and also it toes the line of consent. I'm a big fan of consent, and I'm sure y'all are too. Obligation sex uh, sounds a lot like spousal rape to me, so I'm hoping that she's not here to defend that, but I, I don't know really what I expected when I clicked on the title other than for her to defend it. So let's just see where it goes. I saw that, you know, red bells went off in my head, red warning lights went off in my head. Um, how can, obligation sex is biblical. It's in 1 Corinthians 7 about a wife not defrauding, husbands and wives not 
brought in each other and that our husband's body is ours and our body is our husband's. And then I thought about the word obligation. And, and this is what a lot of people these days do with words. They twist it to mean something evil and wrong. Oblig- do you mean they look at context? Do you mean that they try to understand the closest possible meaning to the original writing? Do you mean that they don't just take things at face value from, say, the King James Version, which is not, like, which is very far from what the Bible was originally? Do you mean that they look at that, that they look at what certain words mean and refer to in Hebrew or in Greek? Is that what you mean? Additionally, I spoke about 1 Corinthians 7 in a video about Paul and Morgan's dating guide when it comes to sexual purity and what that looks like, what it means, where we talked about how the church in Corinth was wild and out and Paul was trying to kind of rein them back in. So I'm not going to go into the whole story behind that because I already did it in that video, but let me just go ahead and read to you what a version of the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 7, which is what she's referring to. 1 Corinthians 7, New International Version. Concerning Married Life is the title of this chapter. For the matters you wrote about, because this is all like a series of letters going back and forth between Paul and the church. Now for the matters you wrote about. Quote, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. End quote well, I guess we're done. Because if we're just taking one verse and and running with it, we could take that one. Everybody should be celibate. It is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. But there's more. There's always more. I am so skeptical every time somebody just wants to throw a verse out there. And it really agitates me when they do that in order to condemn people, to shame people, to make women feel like they have to do something that they don't want to do. Because it's like, Oh, well, it's in the Bible. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in the Bible that you can use to make it mean whatever you want it to mean. But when you look at the context, it gives you so much more information. You know, even with positive verses, I think that you can take those and turn them into something that they're not supposed to be. One of my favorite verses is, it goes something like, uh, for once you lived in darkness, but now you are of the light. So live as people of light. And I think that that is an incredibly beautiful sentiment. But I could see a situation hypothetically where somebody might lean into that to an extreme and it could possibly lead to toxic positivity of, well, I I don't have darkness. I I don't live in the darkness. There's no darkness within me. I am a person of light and I am always happy and I'm always positive and I'm always showing that light. And you don't give yourself the grace to take a step back and say, I'm dealing with something really dark. I need to move through it or... Um, If you're confronting a problem in your own life and you have to be assertive or you have to be less than kind because that's the only way to get something done. I know personally for me, I literally just had a phone call where I wasn't super nice and happy. I had to be on a phone call advocating for our foster kids and I've been nice I've been kind, I've been cooperative for the past five months and what needs to get done is not getting done. So I had to change the approach a little bit. I had to be a little bit more aggressive and assertive and powerful. And to me, that doesn't feel like living in the light. I don't like being forceful with people, but sometimes you have to in order to bring more light, in order to contribute to the greater good. So if somebody took the verse of, you know, for once you lived in darkness, but now you are of the light, so live as people of light, and that's all they went with, they might not be able to make that differentiation into when it's more appropriate to not be super light and happy all the time. So even with seemingly positive verses, something negative could come out of it if you don't look at the bigger picture. Back to this, though. (laughs) You know, now for the matters you wrote about, it is good for man not to have sexual relations with a woman. But since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sexual relations with his own wife and each woman her own husband, aka stop cheating on each other. It's not giving you the context. Stop sleeping with your family members and stop sleeping with other people's spouses. 
Thank you. The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife and likewise the wife to her husband. Y'all committed to each other, so let's keep it that way. Stop sleeping around, please. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. You can't just go around sleeping with whoever you want to sleep with. You made a commitment. Stick to it. Do not deprive each other, as in, y'all, you made this commitment. You're married. You are no longer celibate like I was asking you to be, so you've made this commitment have sex with each other instead of with others. Do not deprive each other except perhaps by mutual consent and for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer. Then come back again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. <laughs> I say this as a concession, not as a command. I wish that all of you were as I am, celibate, but each of you has your own gift from God. One has this gift, another has that. Now to the unmarried and the widows I say, it is good for them to stay unmarried as I do, but if they cannot control themselves, they should marry, for it is better to marry than burn with passion. And we went into this whole thing too, where it's like you're putting this sex on a pedestal and it's getting in the way of the bigger things I have planned for you, the things that I would like to see come from this church. So if it's really that important to you to have sex, get married, like just do it already. Because Paul is saying, I wish, I wish none of this was happening. I wish no sex was happening at all and you were as I am right now. But I'm conceding because you're already doing this, let's have some structure to it. So this isn't even Paul saying, hey, you should get married. You should have sex and your husband should tell you what to do. To the married, I give this command, not I, but the Lord. A wife must not separate from her husband, but if she does, she must remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband and a husband must not divorce his wife. And then get this, to the rest, I say this, I, not the Lord. He's he is making the clear distinction. I'm not getting this from God. Like God isn't telling me that I should be putting this down. I'm saying this. If any brother has a wife who is not a believer and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. And if a woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbelieving has been sanctified through his wife and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. But if the unbeliever leaves, let it be so. The brother or sister is not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. How do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? Let's go ahead and hear the rest. Maybe she will give us some context. Maybe I cut her off too soon. It is only a six-minute video, though, so who knows? Obligation isn't a bad word. I'm obligated to stay faithful to my husband. I'm Correct. obligated to be a keeper at home and take care of my home. I'm obligated to many things. He's obligated to work hard and provide a living for, for us. We're all yep. if, that, if that is the marriage that you have entered into where you are a homemaker and he is the breadwinner, yeah, you know, for the time that that works for you, yes, that is what you have agreed to to obey God. Obligation is it's not a bad word. As a believer, yes, you do have an obligation to obey God. And we could change that word to responsibility. And in sex, concerning sex, are we obligated to have sex with our husbands? Yes, it's our responsibility to not defraud our husbands. That's what the King James uses. Do not defraud our husbands. So, and we don't go by our emotions and our feelings in this way. We go by the truth of God's word and doing what's right. Just like our husbands go off to work hard, to work every day and work hard, whether they feel like it or not. For some reason, they make sex in a completely different category. It, sh it should be because that is your own bodily autonomy. If you, if you have agreed to be a homemaker and your husband has agreed to be the breadwinner, you have an obligation to take care of the home, to do the cooking, to do the grocery shopping, to raise the children. That is your agreement. It's not, oh, well, you're going to you're gonna go to work every day because you have that obligation, so that means I have to have sex with you. I think this is a big reason why sex should be talked about way more freely within the church because people who are not exposed to 
sexual knowledge or education might have a very naive understanding that once they get married and they're finally allowed to have sex, it's going to happen all the time. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be so amazing. And of course, I'm going to have sex with my husband. I want to make him happy. And they might have a lot of misconceptions based on a lack of knowledge when they don't understand that the first time you have sex, it might not be great. The first time you have sex, if you've been saving yourself for marriage, you might feel absolutely racked with guilt. And how are you supposed to reconcile the fact that your purity is linked to your sexuality and the fact that you are a virgin until you're married when you focused all this attention on being a virgin, not having sex, and then you do have sex. And even if you do it the the right way within the confines of marriage to your husband, it doesn't take away that guilt or that odd feeling or the feeling of being dirty or impure. So sex is a very complex topic and we need to be open about talking about it. But back to her point, your obligation is to be a homemaker. His obligation is is to go to work. You might wake up one day and say, I don't really feel like vacuuming and dusting and mopping, but If that's the part that you've agreed to play in this marriage, that's what you've agreed to. So you should probably fulfill your duty unless you're sick or or having an off day. It'll get done eventually. I wouldn't be too hard on yourself. But uh, your body is your body. Like your body is your own. And yes, you have an obligation to remain faithful to your husband. And if your sex life is not quite going how you would like it to or how he would like it to, You should have conversations about how to reconcile it, but you do not owe anybody sex just because they're married to you, just because it's being demanded of you by your husband and that's your obligation to him. Nope, basic human respect and consent exists. Consent exists within marriage. It it kind of hurts my heart to think that she might not feel that way that she might not think she has a right to consent. I don't quite know how she feels, but it does really hurt me to think that she's gone however long she's been married for, thinking that the Bible told her she does not have a right to say no. And if if it hurts, if she just had a kid and her body isn't fully recovered, but her husband wants it, she has to say yes. Or if she's not feeling well and she just wants to sleep and relax, Oh, okay, my husband wants it. I have to say yes. I have to use my body to make you happy. Wow. And everything else in a marriage. But it's not. It's it's important to men. Very important. And to many women, it's very important. Sex with your spouse facilitates closeness. I think if you have a great friendship already or a great partnership, it's not the most important thing. You can get by without making it the absolute center of your relationship. But I do, I agree that um, it is, it's an important part of a relationship and it does facilitate that feeling of closeness and trust. And it signifies that you do have that with each other. So um, I do, I think it's important, but I don't think it's the most important thing. So I just lost my (laughs) thought. Happens to me all the time. So we should, oh, I know what I was thinking about. We are created. We were created to be our husband's helpmeet. We're called to love our husbands. We're called... She say helpmeet? We're called to love... I've never heard of that. We're called to esteem them higher than ourselves, in Philippines it tells us to do. We're called to, to, you know, just in in all areas please our husbands. And part of that is pleasing them sexually. Let's check out Philippians, shall we? I mean, here's a nice verse from Philippians. Obviously, I don't know the context, so don't think I'm being hypocritical. I'm just looking for the verse that she's talking about, and this is the first thing that comes up. Uh, Philippians 2.3, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. doesn't specifically say husband, so I'm sure that's not it. I googled Philippians husband higher than self, and that was the only thing that came up, so. We're called to, to, you know, just... In, in all areas, please our husbands, and part of that is pleasing them sexually. This should be no problem for a godly woman. A godly wise woman wouldn't even consider the word, the phrase obligation sex. That wouldn't even be in her office. That has never even crossed my mind, obligation sex. Even before I was a transform wife, <laughs> I went through many years of sickness, as many of you knew. But I still 
tried my very hardest not to deprive my husband sexually. I wanted to please him. I knew how important it was to him. And so I would find ways to please him, even when it was hard for me. But this was important to me. It wasn't obligation sex to me ever. I loved my husband and it wasn't marital rape, you know, because I consented. A godly wife will always want to consent, give her consent and want to please her husband. This should even be a discussion. I'm not going to tell anybody how to live their life, but everybody has sexual wants and desires. It is important to, um, if you get married, to choose to spend your life with somebody who you are sexually compatible with. It is your obligation to remain faithful and to have those conversations if you're you're noticing things just kind of aren't meshing right there. Um, but you don't ever have to do something in a marriage that makes you feel uncomfortable. Or like, uh, uh, the fact that she was like, yeah, it was hard for me. That breaks my heart for her. She said, even if it was hard for me, I, I wouldn't consider it uh, marital rape. From where I sit, marriage should not be hard or difficult. Uh, I do think it takes an effort. I think you go through seasons where things just are rough, like they're not going smoothly, all are bumping heads. Maybe one of you is going through a tougher season at jo at your job, at work. Um, I know for one year when I was in college, I was taking a full course load at community college, a full course load at my university, and I was just generally miserable. And it was a really hard time for me. And I was not very much fun to be around, which then caused my husband to not want to be around me and not want to listen to me complain, because that's essentially all I did. And it took about three, four months, I think, of that for him to finally get it out of like, oh my God, I don't want to hear this anymore. All you are doing is complaining. And he was right. Like he had to call me on my crap. And I didn't take it well at first. But eventually I was like, you're totally right. It's so not fair. For me to just like I chose to do this. I chose to take this full course load on both sides. And it's it's not right of me to just come home and unload on you and be short with you because I'm stressed. So there are gonna be seasons where it's difficult and things are not going smoothly, but you wake up every day and you choose to love your spouse and you choose to find ways to make each other happy. You both have to do that. A marriage doesn't work on just one end. If only one person is making the commitment or making the sacrifices that are necessary in order to have a healthy marriage. And so the fact that she's like, even if it was difficult, I didn't consider it an obligation. I chose to do it. It hurts my heart because I wouldn't consider that something that is a marker of a healthy marriage where you don't want to have sex with your husband or, or maybe you're like, oh, I'm not really in the mood right now, but okay, because it'll make you happy, I will. This is this is my version of consent. Consent should be an enthusiastic, full-bodied yes, not a, well, I guess if he wants it. And if you're, if you're in a place in your marriage where things just aren't going smoothly in terms of your sexual life, there are things that you can do to make it better so that you're both wanting to do it and you're both excited about it not that you're doing it out of, well, this is my duty as a wife. I think there are plenty of things that can contribute to a woman not wanting to engage in sex or not being excited about it. And sometimes it's just a matter of the way that they're being treated by their husband or the season of life that they are in at that moment. Maybe they're stressed about other things or maybe they don't feel good about themselves. Maybe they're having body image issues. Maybe it's because it makes them feel dirty because we are taught so often that sex is a dirty thing. And so there are ways to process that and get through it to where it's something that you both want to do and you're both excited about rather than, ah, well, I'm his wife, so this is what I do. I can't judge. I can't say I hope she goes to therapy. I mean, I think everybody can benefit from therapy, but she is free to live her life as she pleases. Sure among godly women. So uh, where she gets the obligation is toxic in a marriage, I have no clue, but it's not from scripture. It's not from me, because I've had times where I definitely felt obligated to have sex with my husband, but it was because I wanted to do that, because it was what God has called me to do. 
and I love my husband. And this is how it should be for all of you women who love the Lord and who love your husband. God commands that I teach you to love your husband. Part of loving your husband is being sexually available to him. Some men want it every day, some every other day, some just once, want it once a week. But be available to him. It, God created sex to bind us together. We become one flesh. And it keeps husbands, you know, happy. <laughs> they're, um, and they're not as tempted to go elsewhere. I'm not blaming women if, they're, if they are not depriving their husbands. <laughs> and their husbands go elsewhere. It's not their wife's fault. But if a wife, my husband's mentoring a man who his wife hasn't given him sex for nine months. Why? If he's kind of going out. Why? Is it something to do with the fact that he feels entitled to her body? Is it something to do with the way that he treats her? Is it that she's pregnant and maybe sick and doesn't feel good? Is it that, like, there are a million reasons why she could be not wanting to have sex. And you're going to sit here and say, well, instead of working on whatever it is and trying to get to the root of the problem, if he goes elsewhere, she's not fulfilling her, her duties as a wife. No, I mean, part of being married is mutual respect. And why? Here's my question. Men, do you want to have sex with somebody who doesn't really want to have sex with you? I mean, does that make you feel good? Does that make you feel like a powerful man? Does, really, honestly. She's to blame too. He's, he'll, he's to blame for going elsewhere. That's okay, 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 okay. Maybe... Maybe it's something where she's not wanting to communicate. Maybe she's doing it because she's being vindictive. Maybe there could be a million reasons. I'm not sitting here saying that like the only explanation is that it's something her husband is doing, but it could have absolutely nothing to do with him and it could have everything to do with how she feels about herself. Maybe how he makes her feel about herself. Maybe she is doing it out of some weird... I don't know, power power dynamic thing, like power grab, or maybe she's being unfaithful. I don't know. I don't know their story. But the fact that you would use this example and say, if he goes somewhere else, I mean, yeah, that's his sin too, but it's her sin. No. In general, no. <laughs> but she's to blame for depriving him. We will stand, you know, in, before God for what we've done. We must obey God. <laughs> and not worry about what our husbands do. But so I'm wives, sorry, what? Don't deprive your husbands. Don't consider it obligation sex. Submit to your husband and want to obey him. All these are good things or biblical. I teach the Bible. It's so easy to teach the Bible because I don't have to kind of remember what I've taught in the past. It's, if you read my writings from over the last 10 years, they're consistent because I stick with the scripture. Think of it as pleasing your husband and wanting to do what's best for him and esteeming him higher. And you esteem yourself. <laughs> this is good. It pleases your husband and it pleases God and it brings glory to Him. He created sex for marriage, within marriage, and it's good. <laughs> bye bye. I see now why there are so many reaction videos that get recommended to me on my homepage um, of, of people reacting to her because that is extreme in my opinion from where I stand um I don't know that there's anything else I can add to that other than uh you do have an obligation to remain faithful to your spouse but I don't think that that means sex whenever you want it wherever you want it however you want it yep it's my job to make you happy if you are a young religious person and you are getting told this narrative of it is your job to please your husband sexually I just, I want to encourage you to reframe that and think about how you are your own person. Yes, the Bible does say that, um, you know, you leave and cleave when, when you get married. You leave your own mother and father and you cleave to your wife. You do become one flesh. You are a unit. You are a team. And so I would encourage you to think of it less as it is my obligation to give my spouse sex or in, according to her narrative, um, give my husband sex whenever he wants it and think about sex more as an opportunity to grow your relationship and encourage intimacy and use it <laughs> not as a tool, but to understand that that is really powerful when you think about 
the closeness that can come from sex with your spouse or with your partner when you are thinking about the mutual enjoyment of both parties involved in your marriage, not just one. Like I said, sex is an important part in your marriage, but I would encourage you not to think that if I'm not having sex with my husband every time he tries to initiate it, I'm going to hell. That can be so damaging to your self-esteem. It it ties your worth to sex, essentially. You know, you're, you're responsible for making your husband happy, so anytime he wants sex, you have to do it. Like, okay, but, but so that's all I'm worth. Like, that is my value. My value in making him happy is is sex. Like, it's just my body. That could be anybody then right? I mean, that's so demeaning to to say that it is your job to make your husband happy through sex, right? And again, I don't think any good Christian man, any godly man is going to want to have sex with somebody who is less than willing, who, I mean, she said she was willing, but is less than like enthusiastic. Would it make you feel good to have sex with somebody who wasn't super excited and and wanting to and ready to have sex with you? I don't think so. Let me know your thoughts down below. Okay, I'm kind of exhausted. Um, I got way more emotional in that one than I thought I would, uh, but I did promise that we would look at one title that I was just side-eyeing real hard and one that I thought could potentially be good. Let me like crack my back and we'll get into it. Now, this video is called Joy Will Never Come By Controlling Others. I think this has potential to be good. I like the title. You can't control anybody. You can share ideas, you can share your perspective and your knowledge, but ultimately, people are free to do as they please. So, maybe there's something that Miss Lori and I can come to a common ground on. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I got like two minutes in and I changed my mind. It's literally just a political rant about how the left controls everything and despite having so much control, they're so miserable, they're responsible for all of the debauchery in the world. Meanwhile, people on the right are the most joyful people that you will ever meet because Jesus is king and if you're on the left, you're not with Jesus and um, the left are, is thriving and conservatives, people on the right are getting censored and taken down and you know this is from me I'm not on TikTok but I've seen a lot of things going around about how anything to do with LGBTQIA plus community on TikTok is like being censored and I think the same with YouTube if you make it like known in your thumbnail or your title that it is about LGBTQ plus topics you tend to get demonetized or um, at least less ads maybe your video gets a little bit suppressed so I don't know uh, how valid that is that people on the right are the only ones who are having issues with that, I will say. Like I said, it's literally just a full-on political rant and um, not what I was hoping for when I clicked on the video. The things that she is saying in the video are just so patently false that it feels like a waste of my time to go through and debunk. If somebody isn't willing to see or accept reality based on the things that are actually happening around them, there's nothing you can say to change their mind. There's no way I can look at that and say, okay, you know, you're giving some good points here, but what if we looked at it like this? It's literally just nonsense. So I, I'm not going to take the time to go through and react to it. I'm really kind of disappointed that the title is Joy Will Never Come by Controlling Others and she's sitting here ranting about people on the left and how they control everything but they're joyless and whatever whatever that's it <laughs> that's it for the video for the reactions I'm done I'm not doing any more let me know down below what you thought of that first video that we reacted to if you have your own thoughts or experiences that you feel comfortable or called to share, as particularly if you grew up in the church, if you heard a lot of rhetoric like that and um, how it impacted you and the way that you view marriage, I think that that would be so fascinating to hear about and see from other people's experiences. And while you're doing that, if you would consider liking this video or subscribing to my channel, that would be incredible. And if you have subscribed already, Thank you so much. I am so appreciative of you and I love being able to just sit here, hang out with you and talk about whatever.
Additionally, um, I will be going live for the deconstruction video sometime later, probably this week. I'm trying to figure out exactly when it will be best for my schedule. I know that I used to do a lot of lives on Thursdays, so probably on Thursday, but if you want to, go ahead and follow me on Instagram because I will be announcing it there. I'll also put it on my community tab, but I feel like sometimes that's kind of finicky and people who are subscribed to me don't always see it. With all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Thank you so much for watching. Please be kind to people and I will see you in the next one. Bye.